Hi, welcome back to Art and Soul. My name is Mike Severin. Hope you're having a good day. And uh, we're going to get some painting done today, which i uh, kind of excited about getting this little mountain forest scene um, started on this canvas that we started with last week. Um, I made it look like wood um, with the wood graining. And uh, this is kind of a nice little technique that uh, maybe you can incorporate and try in, in, in your painting. Before I get started on that, I want to indulge just one second of your time. I'm going to dedicate today's show to a very special person in my life, CJ. Um, on all of my paintings, next to my signature or somewhere in the painting, is a little CJ. CJ is the love of my life, and I am proud to say that. Unfortunately, we went through a little breakup, and that's okay. Um, today's kind of a rough day for me. Maybe you're having a rough day. I'll show you what I do when I have a rough day. I paint. And what I'm going to paint is something today that I, a place that I go to get away from the cares of the world, the stresses of life, into the woods and the mountains. Um, it's a great sanctuary, a place that I can clear my head and clear my mind and clear my soul. This show, as you know, art and soul. Yes, we do the art, but yes, a big part of the show is about the soul. And I wanted to express to you today the reason why I wanted to tell you that little thing about myself is that I'm a human being just like anybody else. I've got struggles just like you and everyone else in the world. And it's how we deal with those on a daily basis that kind of makes us get through life um, better or worse, and I hope that I can be an influence and help you to get through your day a little bit better. So that all being said, CJ, I love you. Here is what we're going to do today. I'm going to grab um, one, of my, uh, one of my brushes here. Now you'll find that you probably have preferences as you, as you paint, and there are certain ones that I just love, um, and this happens to be, be one of them. Um, what we're going to do here, um, basically we're going to start out um, with this, um, which is kind of a layout of what we're going to do. Um, there's, there's this rule of thumb that goes in all paintings. Usually you have a horizon line, which is going to be across here someplace, the sky, the middle ground, and then the foreground. And um, a kind of a little way that I've kind of uh, put together is to kind of make it simpler to remember that is this show, like I said, is about soul. So we are healing, horizon line, sky is the soul, and we are mending with our middle ground, and we're forgiving. Forgiving, a lot of times, is just forgiving ourselves. A lot of times, uh, that's our biggest problem is we don't forgive ourselves. Today's show kind of as a theme is going to be of, of power of words. And uh, what I did there, if you noticed, I just took some ultramarine blue mixed with some white, just mixed it there on the palette. And I'll go through the colors here as we, as we start going into them. But we're going to start with our sky. And I'm just going to lay in just a very simple little sky, uh, not a whole lot of um, going on in it. It's just this uh, ultramarine blue and the white. The power of words is an incredible thing. I think that um, a lot of times we don't think about our words. And to be honest with you, the reason why I'm in the situation I am today with my little breakup is because of words that came out of my mouth that shouldn't have come out. And you can write volumes and volumes, but it all can be destroyed in a couple of sentences. And once it comes out of your mouth, it can't ever be put back. And so today I want to kind of just remind us as we are painting this picture today that we need to be very cautious about the words that we use. 
It's very powerful. They can, they can create and they can destroy. And it can make somebody's day or it can ruin their life. And what sometimes happens for a lot of people is they don't, they don't think before they talk. They just open their mouth and let whatever fly. And uh, that is probably the worst thing that you can possibly do. Taking and stepping back for a couple of seconds to think about those words uh, can make a huge difference in your future. And your whole life can be changed in the course of one little wrong sentence or a word. And like I said, once it goes out, you can't ever take it back. So as you can see, as I was talking there, I just put on basically just a light blue uh, sky background. Um, if, if you notice, I didn't mix the paint with the pal or with the palette knife. I just mixed it on the on the palette itself. So you've got some areas that are darker blue, some that are lighter, and that's okay. And you can actually see some of the little brown that's that's in the from the background that's that's shining through there too. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make up a little bit of mountain color. And mountain color, um, I'm just going to take a little, just a little bit of black, and I'm going to throw it in with that blue, light blue that we had created there. And maybe just a little more. I want a, a little darker to start with. And we'll bring in a little more of the blue in there as well. And I'm going to do this with the palette knife. Um, you can do it any way you want to. I just put a little roll on the end of the palette knife and there's a lot of artists that are out there that do similar techniques. So what I'm doing here probably is not anything new to you, uh, but maybe it is. And uh, so as you can see, I'm just kind of just kind of blocking in a, a basic mountain uh, that we'll have there in the background and kind of maybe it'll jog up here you know our mountains are an incredible creation that God has made and and I I just love going and seeing the mountains and spending time communing with nature I think it's something that everybody needs to do is find time in their lives to to get away be reflective on on life as you can see, I'm just taking now and just pulling the excess paint out. Uh, and if maybe there's a certain mountain you're wanting to paint specifically, uh, you know, you obviously take care to make sure that you did that. In fact, I did a, a painting of Mount Rainier here recently and, and I had to actually Google up a picture of it just to make sure that I was getting all of the features correct. Now what I've done is I've just just got another roll of just white paint. It's got a little bit of light blue in it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take now and just kind of just uh, lightly touch the tops of the ridges here. See, this one comes down. And what you're doing is you're basically just lightly letting the palette knife graze across the surface letting the texture of the canvas actually pull off sections of, of, of the paint. And if you look at it, it from a distance, it actually looks like they're snow capped. And you can do work this to whatever degree that you want. Um, but, you know, it's, it's again, it's just a personal, personal preference. So we've got our highlights that we've hit there. So now I want to hit just a little, little bit of a, of a shadowed side of it. And uh, so I'm just taking just a little bit of the blue and white um, just as a shadow color. And I'm just going to touch a couple of little spots on here just to hit where that might be through here it, just kind of think about the shape of the mountain and and what what you're wanting to, it to look like that looks pretty good right there so I think I'm gonna leave that for now and just 
scrape off the excess paint. And now we're ready to do a little bit of just a mid range here of, of mountains. Um, so without even cleaning my brush, I'm gonna go right back to it. It's got that white, light blue in it. And I'm gonna take some sap green. And as I'm putting it on there, you can see it's actually that white and the light blue that was on the brush is actually mixed in and it's lightened it up right there on the palette. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take just really lightly and notice how I've got the brush. Um, I'm just working it, uh, almost just dabbing onto the canvas. We want a little more paint on there. And if you're out in the woods and are looking, you will see that the farther that the mountain ranges are, the lighter they are. And the closer they are to you, the lighter they become. And, uh, or, uh, sorry, the opposite of that. It's the lighter away from you. And, because it's faded because of the atmosphere. And so then the mountains that are closer are going to be a little darker. So that's pretty good. We could spend some more time there, but I think we're going to leave that for right now. Kind of some different contours there of the mountain. I might bring in just another one that's a little darker that's right up front here. So we'll have a couple layers of, of the mountains. That's good. Right now we've got so many wildfires going in and uh, it's it's really sad to see all of the all of the forests that are up in flames right now. My heart sure goes out to those firefighters that are out there working on the lines. So We've got there uh, basically some far distant mountain um, or low foothills. And so now I'm gonna mix it up and grab a, a bigger brush. Go to my Home Depot special here. And uh, we're gonna lighten up now because we're gonna put like a little meadow that's in there. So I'm just adding some uh, cad yellow right into that sap green maybe just a hair of paint thinner to thin that down a little more. Oh, it's got too much paint thinner. There we go. And again, I'm just taking and just dabbing it on. And as you can tell, I've got a whole mixture of different colors that are that are showing up on on the canvas because I didn't over mix what's on the palette. You've got the a lot of yellows, but a lot of greens that are in there as well, and which is good. I like I like the effect that it gives up on the up on the canvas. And we're just going to continue that down, bring in a few more yellow highlights that are coming through there where the sun might be hitting. And you can take and blend as much as you want on these to make this a soft um, little meadow across there as you would like. Uh, that's, you know, just a personal, personal preference there. And I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but there's a lot of little areas where the brown is showing through, which would be normal if you were out in the woods. You'd see a lot of the wood that would be in between, or a lot of the wood that would, <laughs> yeah, I keep saying wood. Um, a lot of the dirt that would actually be showing up across there. And I want a little more darks across just because I want to break it up. Um, remember our rule of thumb that, that dark only works against the light. And so we, we want to maintain kind of going back and forth, the lights and the darks, the lights and the darks. Just sets up different planes in your painting. Okay, I'm gonna now go right back into that 
uh, brush that I had, still haven't cleaned it out, and I'm gonna mix again um, some of the, the blue with the white, and you've got just a hint of that green that's in there. And we're just gonna put just a little, like there's a little pond that's down here at the base. And again, if you notice, it's picking up a lot of the colors that are in the brush. Some of those deeper blues, the ultramarine that's in there, and uh, some of the green that was in there. Let's see, we're just go right on across here. There we go. So we got ourselves a little little pond in front of this meadow. What we're gonna do is we'll just take that same brush that we had and I wanna take and I wanna pull just straight down. It's like it's the shadow or the reflections of the weeds that are there along the edge of the pond. And then once I do that, I just wipe the excess paint off on my paper towel here. And then I wanna go just across, just lightly across makes it look like there's a little bit of a sheen there on the surface of the water. I picked up a little more of the white and I just want to do the same thing across. Nothing fancy here. This is really simple to do, really easy to do. Anybody can do this. So we take, go back to our, our uh, palette knife and I want to get just a little bit of a of, uh, white, titanium white, a little roll on the end. And I just am gonna take and make just a little bit, just take the edge and just kind of cut it along there. And it just gives us a light where the water line would be. And maybe a couple of them that are across where the lights causing a sheen across the top of the water. All right, so we've got a nice little scene here. We've got a lot of acts, or a lot of room here on the edge, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and put in some big old trees, and I, I love making trees, and trees, a lot of people get hung up on them, but they're really, really simple, as you'll see, to make. Um, just go with a fan brush here, and I'm gonna go straight into that sap green and I'll bring in just a little bit of permanent green in there just to add a little mix to it. And we're gonna start up here and all we're gonna do is just gonna make a line coming down. And, and we just take the end of the, the fan brush and we just start putting in. We're going back and forth, back and forth pushing it in, pushing it in. Still needs a little darker there. Is this getting caught up down here? There we go, that's better. I'm gonna add in a little green, in, or a blue into that as well as we get farther down, make this darker and darker. There we go. That looks, that looks better. And as my, yeah, my friend, everybody's friend, I, I suppose, that's watched art shows on TV, Bob Ross, he said, every tree has to have a friend. Everybody needs a friend. So we're gonna put another one right here. There you go. And maybe, Maybe we'll just pull it out here and do a do another another one over here. As you can see, I'm just pushing basically that fan brush, just basically collapsing it almost onto the onto the canvas. But it, kind of gives some, I mean, it's very realistic looking of what, what the trees would look like. And again, we're not trying to do here to be completely accurate. This is more just 
more the illusion. I mean, people, your eye is going to figure out exactly what they are. So now we've got our, our trees there, but we need some highlights on them. Make them pop a little bit more. So I'm going into that cad yellow. And I'm just going to take just a few little spots coming down through. And then over here, because the light's coming in this direction. Because remember, we put that on our mountains. We want to take and put some of that just on the right side of that tree. And it doesn't have to be every limb, just enough to be where, where the light might be hitting it. And going straight back into that cad yellow. And I'll do this little guy over here. Just He's going to be behind, so you're not going to see him as much. And of course, the ones on this side, we've got to do the same thing too. So like I was saying earlier, be careful about your words. I have learned the hard way over the years and this lesson that I've learned in the last, last few days has been a hard lesson and, uh, and if I can maybe just be a good reminder to you to watch those words and be guarded with them, then it, I will have succeeded today. So I think we're done with our fan brush. So now I'm going to go, we need something down here in our foreground. And uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go right back into our, uh, our greens and yellows. I need a little bit more paint thinner on there just to get that to stick a little better. And so we're just put, we're just going to put some bushes that are sticking up here. And they stick right across the water there. It would be, be a great place to just go and just sit and reflect on life and kind of forget about the world for a while. In fact, I wish I was had an opportunity to, to go do that here soon. That would be good. I could use some little bit of time out in the woods to regroup. Everybody needs it. So there we go. We've got just a just some real simple bushes. You can see all I was doing is just tabbing it, dabbing it um, onto the onto the canvas. So now I want to get just a little bit of white, some more of the yellow. I want to lighten it up just a little. And again, just hitting some highlights. Only this time, kind of use some thought when you're putting this on because. We're not trying to do every little rounded bush. What we're trying to do is just do enough of the shape to where you can tell where it separates out those bushes. Don't be afraid to add more, more paint in. I'll do over here, kind of where the light's hitting across there. If you get a big you know, spot where it you get a little more paint, that's okay. It adds texture. So I want to add just a little more of the white into that yellow. You know, one thing I think I'm going to do and I want to do this. I want a little path going back there. I just want to do that. So I'm just going to take just and scrub off just a little bit of that paint that I put on. Just round it off a little bit. I'm going to get some of that yellow ochre and I'm just going to make a little pathway that goes back right to the edge of that edge of that lake. Yeah, and we'll grab just a little bit of white just to 
put a little highlights maybe across the path. And then we'll finish it out here with just a little bit of, a little bit of, I'm gonna throw in a hair bit of orange into it. Just a little bit of these weeds that might be bushes that are sticking up along the edge of that pathway. There we go. I kind of like that. But as you can see, pretty simple, easy painting to do. Paint it on a, on a canvas to make it look like it's painted on wood. Simple little scene that you can do. Looks like we're almost out of time and I want to leave you with a couple of words before I go, like I always do. I appreciate so much you joining me on this show. Uh, this has been a, a great process for me and hopefully it's been a learning experience for you and will continue to. And I would encourage you again, invite your friends to watch it. Um, even if they're not painters, maybe there's something I can say along the way that can help them. Today, like every day, I end the show with a few words. And today, I made it through the show without crying. And you go, yeah, whatever. I'm an artist, I'm entitled to cry if I want to. We're sensitive guys. I'm wearing pink. <laughs> I just want you to know that no matter what you're going through in your life, who's around you, maybe you've lost a loved one, maybe you've lost your job, maybe you've lost the love of your life. It doesn't matter. There's a God above that's watching you, has got his hand in your hand and walking beside you. You may not feel it, you may not sense it always, but he's there. He's got mine and I know he's got yours. Watch your words this week. Before you speak, take a second, just a small second, to think about whether the words that are gonna come out of your mouth are the words that need to, because those few sentences could change the rest of your life both for the good or for the bad. Don't make the same mistakes that I have. CJ, I love you. Have a great week and hope to see you next week. Thank you.